Hi, and welcome to That's So Nova. My name is Nova. If this is your first time here, welcome. If this is a uh, returning subscriber or Patreon, hey, how are you doing? Um, today we're going to be doing a one of my favorite bags, one of my, um, one, a really high requested bag. So at the end of each year, um, I, I go through my list and to see if, like what bags were the most popular for me. And I kind of break it down into different things, like for school, uh, computers, uh, baby bags, traveling bags, everyday handbags. So for my traveling bag and baby bag, it is the Gabby Day Trip bag. This bag is really easy and fun to put together. The most complicated part of this bag is the prep work. So we're going to briefly talk about that, but, but if you're trying to sew along with me, please, please, please do the prep work. If not, you're going to fall behind. So let's get into it. I'm going to bring you down here and we're going to talk a little bit about the Gabby bag. The Gabby Day Trip bag is by Georgia Girl Stitch. This channel loves Georgia Girl Stitch. She is knows how to work with domestic machines to make fantastic bags and use leather elements by punching it in, showing you how to reinforce it, and whatnot. It gives the bag a very sophisticated upscale look. So if you're looking into trying to, um, if you're actually looking to trying to get into leather, I highly recommend you follow her channel. Um, follow her channel on, I mean, follow her on Instagram and subscribe to her newsletter. I know a lot of people tell you to do that. And I'm a person that I'm going to tell you straight out. I hate subscribing to newsletters. Um, having constant notifications kind of gives me a little bit of anxiety and I like my inbox to be nice and tidy. If it's not, it makes me feel like my whole life's in disarray, but I digress. That's just me. Um, but with Georgia Girl Stitch, every week you're getting something new, whether it's a free template. She had um, templates for um, strap coverings, which we're going to see shortly on that when I install one. Um, strap coverings, she has had lots of little free patterns. This week we learned about burnishing, um, burnishing, I was going to say wood, but leather. <laughs> um, and it is, um, it was, it came in perfect time. I am planning on making a a little bag for myself that I'm whipping up and I didn't want the raw edges to look too raw and I learned about burnishing through Georgia Girl Stitch so that helps me out tremendously and her Instagram always is full of really cool things she'll try she'll show you how to put in you know snap rivets whether it's with a rivet press or a handheld she she's very open her husband also does some leather work and she shows you what bags sell for her the most at shops and conventions and whatnot. So she's a person I would recommend if you're trying to like dabble a little bit with leather, give her a try because it, it might help you with your leather education. I am continuously learning from her and I'm enjoying every moment of it. So with the Gabby bag, we have, <clears throat> sorry, the first page is black and white. All right. We have um, a strap tab. We have strap connectors. We have um, recessed zipper. It ha keeps earbud. I'm omitting the earbud, but there was Jade. It made a very, um, very good argument about keeping it. I just didn't cut it out afterwards because it could be used for like holding emergency medications and whatnot. There's a the accessory park strip. Um, there's a lot. There's spring snaps. I was going to use the spring snaps that she has in here. Um, there are 12.5. I cannot find the top of my, um, press and I didn't have the handhills. So I'm going to try the 24 line snap and I'm praying that works. If it doesn't, I will work it out with something else. <laughs> um, so we're going to start from the very beginning. If she has, if you don't want to work with leather, she gives you an alternative how to use, uh, wax canvas or waterproof canvas or um, use cotton in how to make it. We're going to be prepping all the work, meeting up on the raw edges on all the pieces that she says, punching the holes out, and if you want to shape in your ends of your leather, you can. Um, like I did my shape ends round. This is the park strip, and there's four holes in here. All right, and I already prepped all my um some of my connectors on the top i am using cork so instead of using 
um, cotton woven that's, you know, interface, I'm using cork. I did put a strip of um, Decoville Light, 5 eighths of an inch in the middle of a 2 inch strip and folded it on itself. Because if I would have folded this fours, that would be 8 layers and it will look bulky. And I cannot stress this enough. And I'm going to say it to you in the camera. Just because your machine sews over it does not mean it's supposed to be sewn over. A bulky seam is a bulky seam and it doesn't look good if you sew over it or not. So the, I think that's like a common misconception. And I think I say it a lot. Try to do things to make it look less bulky and it looks more professional. So we're going to punch all your holes. Then you're going to get your prep work of your exterior and then your interior. My exterior, I'm going for this beautiful seafoam green. I purchased this um, um, cork fabric at um, So Sweetness and I already prepped it with punching out the holes in the areas that and the measurements that she puts in on page seven. I did interface the back of mine with Decoville Light, and I'm going to tell you why. This is the bag that I'm going to be bringing. I'm bringing two bags of So Magical, actually three. The carry-on doesn't count because I didn't make it. I mean, no, the check-in doesn't count because I didn't make it. This will be my carry-on, and then my personal bag is going to be my small little backpack that I am going to make, and it's going to be a surprise to everybody <laughs> what I make. Um, I want people to see, I wanted to make something that represented me. I love um, cork fabric. I say it all the time. If I can sew exclusively with cork, I would. I love leather. So when G when um, Joy gave me this leather right here, it matched so well with this seafoam green that I just almost jumped out of my seat and started dancing. Look at that. That is sexy. So we're gonna. these are part of the preps too. You're going to cut off the straps and I rounded the ends and I did my rivets according to the measurements. There's going to be two of these. Um, I'm going to also show you how I make an adjustable strap because these this this part, I'm going to make my bag work and turn into a backpack or a crossbody um, or a shoulder bag. So what I'm going to do is these become, become your shoulder bag or your backpack and I'm going to add a, make a crossbody out of um, um, some cotton webbing so that I could have it just in case I don't want to wear it as a backpack when I get off. So all of these, those are prepped. Your second part that you're prepping is your lining. So there are marks that need to be, holes that need to be punched on one side of your lining. So we have that all set. So prep is key on here and we are going to start sewing like right now all right we're going to start on page seven and we are going to do the front pocket on the front pocket um on the front pocket we are going to or have i i promise you i had all of these together <laughs> oh yeah i'm sorry my um my my um copy of this bag is kind of a uh, raggedy because I use this bag I make this bag a lot like when I say a lot I mean a lot a lot okay where did you go little pocket okay so we're gonna need our Peltex just grabbing everything real quick I went for like fun reds and blues in the lining Okay, that makes no sense. Hmm. All right, I might have to stop this video. To oh, no, I found it. Huh? No, I don't have to stop it. Okay, <laughs> one second. It slid off my um, bins. I try to put like things in bins so that way we don't have to stop and go. So these are all my lining. All right, so I'm going to do a little, I said I'm going to, I'm going to keep most of this exactly how um, it's done in the pattern because it's done beautifully and I'm going to change it up just a little. I, this is, um, this is your exterior panel A um, slip pocket. So what you normally do is you fold, you're going to put these in half and you would fold this over 
and um, sew the top. What I like to do on my slip pockets when I'm using like cork or something thicker is I like to draw a half an inch and you don't have to use a pen. I'm doing it so you can see because if I use a tandy leather pen, you won't see. <laughs> I'm going to draw a half an inch and then I put one fourth of an inch double sided tape right underneath it. I'm going to peel back the one fourth of an inch double sided tape. Sorry, I need to move that. And bring it to the half inch line. Man, I have little threads everywhere. All right. And this is going to be the exterior slip pocket. All right. So normally you would put these sides together and you would sew down, sew down here. I'm going to show you why I did what I did. I'm going to pop a couple of clips in here so that it doesn't shift and I can keep everything nice and non-shifty. Keeping the half inch exactly in line. And you'll, you will see soon, soon see what we're going to do is we're going to go using a one fourth of an inch seam allowance. I'm going to get the threads and I'm going to sew down one fourth of an inch on both sides, back stitching well in the beginning and then. And just keep everything in line as best as you can. All right, I'm going to go down the other side, and as you can see, I didn't take pull my cut snip my strings. I'll snip them when I'm done. I like to back stitch like three or four stitches. All right, we're gonna trim our threads. And then what I like to do normally is pink, but there you are, pinking cheers. So I'm going to go at an angle, not hitting the stitches, just going to make sure I can help reduce some of the bulk. And I like to just pink to, this is about one eighth of an inch. I'm um, sorry, like, I promise you, like, as soon as I have film, like, I get a million notifications, but then if I'm doing nothing and I want to get, like, notifications to be nosy to see what's going on, <laughs> nothing. <laughs> okay. All right, so then I'm going to turn this right sides out. And I'm going to get a nice um, um, tool to help poke out the corners without poking a hole through the material. Just try to get as nice and sharp. Um, it, the corners, not sharp object. You want a bl nice blunt off object like a book boning tool thing. Um, bone tool, I'm sorry. All right. And then 
this is going to be my top. Look how crisp that looks. And it's not like you could tell that when you do the, when you go all the way around and leave an opening, sometimes you can tell. So I just wanted a nice crisp look. So I'm going to take a couple clips to keep both parts of the opening together while I top stitch this. Okay. All right, and I'm going to back stitch three or four stitches. My stitch length is at a four. I really don't change my stitch length that much. I'm just top stitching at one eighth of an inch. And back stitching. All right, so we're going to then go to page eight and we're going to take one of our exterior pieces. The widest part should be across the top. Make sure that going the height is 18 inches and the bottom, it, the, the width is at 20. We're going to, we're going to go measure down five inches from the top and center. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to have right sides, long sides touching. And you can put a clip there if you want it to. I'm going to just rub a little crease in it. Nothing permanent. Just helps us eyeball things better. And I'm going to get my, my ruler and measure five inches down. And I'm going to use the six as my center mark so that way I know that's where it needs to be. I'm going to find, <laughs> there's a lot of air here. I'm gonna find my center here and then I'm gonna grab some double-sided tape. I like to put double-sided tape. I'm all out of one eighth of an inch so I'm using one fourth. And just rub that in. And I'm just going to find that center one more time. Okay, and make sure that five inch is exactly where it needs to be. And I'm just going to lightly press and I'm just going to make sure it's the right size on both. I feel like it's not. And I didn't re that's the reason why I didn't press hard. I see the line. I'm just going to take a Tandy leather pen, just make a little T, and take a Tandy leather pen and mark a little center line here. Okay. There, it looks better. All right, there goes my favorite ruler. <laughs> so I'm going to now bring this over and I'm going to top stitch it at one eighth of an inch. Hold your threads. 
and I'm going to back stitch like three or four. It's so fun that I'm making a bag for me. I'm always making other bags and I know they're going to sell at conventions or whatnot and it's I always want to make mine and I, I hardly ever get to so I'm excited when you get to make your own just for you you can put all these little like tips tricks modifications that you want in your bag I'm going to back stitch. Okay. Okay. All right. So right here on the bottom corner, it did not catch it, it's like a circle versus a straight line. So what I usually do is I don't fret. I grab a needle and a thread, that's the same color thread that we, we've been using, and I stick it in the hole that was made but did not catch the thread. And you might want to, if your hands are really sensitive, you might want to grab like a pair of pliers or hemostats or something so that way it can be easier on you. And I'm going to green, go underneath the thread that it skipped. <laughs> Sorry, it's kind of hard to do. I have like so many lights in my face. <laughs> okay. <laughs> And you don't have to do this. This is just, I like, perfect stitching is super important to me. <laughs> and I'm just putting it back through on the back of this. And I'm going to pull the threads nice and tight. And it will, like, kind of take care of that area that has, like, that one skip stitch. It's, like I said, most mistakes you can fix. Okay. And that looks better. Trimming down the threads. That looks way better. Okay, um, what's not on here, I'm going to, uh, what is on here is you can put, punch two holes for rivets. I'm going to use these little ones. I don't know what it is about little rivets. They're just, ugh, they're so cute. So I'm going to grab um, two male ends and two female ends. Get my hole puncher and just grab, like, if you have a scrap of Peltex or um, vinyl, something that can help secure the back so that it doesn't punch through. And... Get my hole puncher, and I'm going to get a scrap of <laughs> um, I'm going to get a scrap of um, cork because that's what I have in my scrap bin. And then what I usually do is I just punch a hole through two layers and then trim it down so it's one. And I'm going to draw where I want the, the rivets to be. And normally if I was at my table, I would be bringing this over to um, 
like drill building, drill, doing a drill bit and um, whacking it with a, a mallet. It's just a little easier that way than scrunching up your cork and try and make a hole. But you work with what you got and make magic. Okay. So I'm going to stick a rivet, the metal part, through both holes. And then I'm going to flip it and grab a piece of the cork and then put the female cap. Same thing on this side. Okay, then we're going to set the rivet. So I'm going to bring, scrounge this up and put this in the throat of the press. Press it down. I felt it go in like, it pushes down twice for me. I know everyone's a little bit different. <clears throat> okay, and it's set. So we have one good looking nice slip pocket. And I'm just going to burn um, some of these threads real quick. I hate saying burn, but it's that's exactly what you're doing. Okay, and they're all set. And we are going to now go to... Put this on the side. We're going to um, grab your card slot and your rear panel. So, this is going to be um, the rear panel, and my card slot is this really pretty um, blue. So, I'm going to remove all the clips. She has a really cool technique of creasing and clipping, creasing and clipping, uh, pinching and moving. So, when you get your piece, you're going to draw lines, and I drew lines to and white to show it more. There's measurements on on the on page nine. She wants you to draw a top, which this is my top area right here, and then then the bottom. You make your crease, and then you pinch it to where the white line is. You do the same thing. Each crease you need to stitch down. So I'm going to start with this first one. It's like an accordion. <laughs> it's one eighth of an inch, and I backstitch I love having a zipper pocket that has card slots. I think this is so creative. So you can get to your passports if you're taking this on travel, or if, if you have like my kids get like a million um, gift certificates, like for Rita ice cream or whatever. And you're like, like going out, walking around with your kids. You can just grab your gift cards and, you know, go. Okay, and we're just sewing it down at one eighth of an inch. Okay, so See, that's where we're going to, the crease line for this, that's why you have your three card slots. You're going to take the bottom and you're going to either iron it on or tape it down to one half an inch fold, which that is done. It, once you get this part, this part, like I said, it's, it's kind of just an accordion. You have your measurements, you have your, where you pinch and you have where you crease and when it was explained like that, it made so much more sense. 
Okay, so we're going to make some markings. Move this over here. We are going to put, we fold this under like we did. This is 12 inches wide, and I will double check that. It should be exactly. Yep, exactly 12 inches. And we're going to make some markings. And it should be about seven and a half, seven inches tall. Okay. All right. Then we're going to mm, let's see. Make some marks. So we're going to make a mark at one and a half. Mm -hmm. <sighs> Sorry, my phone. And then we're going to make a mark at two inches. I'm going to need my other ruler because I only can go so far with this one. Five and three fourths. And six and one fourth. All right. Ten. And two and a half. And we're going to sew down these lines so we can make our card slots. Okay, here we go. Okay, I'm going to lift up my thread and go to the other line. If you want to, you can back stitch over each um, card slot line and it, it's just extra reinforcement. I'm going to go over to this middle one and I'm just dragging my thread. And I'll just cut it all off when I'm done. Do this last one. Right. 
trimming those threads. I know they're a nuisance, but trimming them helps out tremendously. All right, and I think this is the last little thread. All right, <clears throat> now we're going to we're going to attach the card slot lining to the card slot pocket lining. So card slot on um, the zipper pocket right sides up on your workstation. There is a top and a bottom um, for the um, on the there's a top and a bottom marking at the end. So your card slot is right sides up on top of the zipper lining attaching the raw edges. So right sides up and I'm going to go to the bottom. Card slots will be upside down. So we're going to sew across here and on the top just to get it all together. I'm sorry, my voice is cracking a little bit. I'm still um, <clears throat> recovering from a cold, so if it cracks, I apologize. I'm trying, I'm trying, this, these kids' germs are super not loyal <laughs> at all. So I'm gonna sew toss this top. The credit card slots are supposed to be backwards. Okay, so we sew there. And let's see, fold the bottom card slot, attach your base along the sides of the slots too. So we're gonna base these real quick on the sides. I should have just went up and across, but no, I'm gonna just do it now. So that the side pockets don't. And I'll just do like a one fourth of an inch here. This would just be an extra row of stitching. All right. All right. So on the on the on the back of your side that says top, you're gonna make a couple of marks. Um, you're gonna go you're gonna go in in three different measurements to make this box. And the measurements are on page ten. We're gonna grab one of our linings. No, we're going to grab, I'm sorry, we're going to grab our, one of, our other side that doesn't have the slip pocket on our exteriors. And I'm going to go find the centers real quick. I'm going to fold this together real quick and just make that nice little crease. And then I'm going to, um, I don't know if anybody else works from a workstation um, on a, um, on a embroidery, not embroidery, but on an industrial machine. Man, so they are just, they don't have a lot of table room. We want to mark this three and a half inches down. And what I like to do.
is um, put a little bit of double-sided tape on the opposite side so it can stay still why whilst you're um trying to baste it and you it doesn't move it doesn't have to be a whole lot just enough that you can cut into it you don't you're not really sewing over it you're just keeping everything in place all right so three and a half inches from the center Okay, and then I'm going to press that double-sided tape. If you're making it with cloth, you could put pens. You could, if you're also worried, you can do like um, these so tight magnets. And we're going to go around. This is when I do change my stitching. I usually drop down to a smaller stitch length because I want a nice crisp pocket. Especially this is going to be the exterior of the bag. I don't want. Um, I don't want it to. Um, I don't want it to look uh, like it's not sewn in right. So I'm going to start at a, on a side and I'm going to back stitch one or two stitches. Pivot. So we're going to cut into this it would help if I cut the bobbin threads. <laughs> we're going to fold and just, I want a good snip. Now, when you get to this section, you want to get as close as you can to your stitches without cutting into your stitches. Now, by the off chance you accidentally do, just go one eighth of an inch all the way around again. It's it your zipper pocket will just be a little bit wider, show a little bit more of the zipper tape. So what I usually do now is if um, I didn't bring my iron over, I would bring my iron, iron this part, take it over again, iron this part, iron this, and then of course this side too. Prepping it for its turn. Okay, then you just feed all your material through. And you're just going to get it nice and hot, pull, tug, do what you got to do, and 
I'm going to take a little bit of um, um, tape and put it on this side so that way it can help hold it down a little bit better and it won't be as reluctant. <laughs> but I'm not putting it on the top because we're going to have to sew around that. So I'm just trying to help keep stuff in place. I'm going to set up a little a mini iron station so that way I can iron. I iron a lot more when I'm working than I think people should know. <laughs> And I'm going to do the same thing on this side. And I'm just going to pull it so you don't see the lining on the right side and just give it a nice little tug and it should go pretty well where you can't see too much of the lining that's what you're gearing for you just want to see the cork all right then I'm going to grab my zipper um, she uses metal zippers and I did not have metal zippers that mat that was that matched this color. So I was like, okay, I'm just going to use what I got, right? I'm going to grab some double sided tape. And I'm going to that. Snip it. And then I'm going to grab um, a zipper pull. First, I'm going to <laughs> fire, fire. I don't, there's like, I'm going to melt my zipper tape. There's like no way you can say it where it sounds like elegant. I'm just going to set fire to my um, zipper tape. Melt it. <laughs> Burn it. <laughs> like it doesn't sound, no matter how you say it, it doesn't look sound elegant, you know? All right, so I'm going to put this in the middle. I'm going to take off the double-sided tape. I'm going to... I'm going to actually bring it. I want the zipper pull to close to the left. It, you can have it close to the right. It's your bag. Do it. Or like if you're making this for someone, ask them how they like it. You'll be surprised. Sometimes there's a lot of ambidextrics and a lot of people that are left-handed. And they're like, yeah, please make the zipper to the right, please. So I'm going to pull my, my back and just align this as best as I can and just making sure that my zipper teeth are in the middle of both ends and I'm just like realigning and shifting the, the lining so I can get it out of the way as best as I possibly can. Okay. We're going to sew all the way around this using one eighth of an inch. Now you could pull your threads to the back. I'm not. Um, I like to secure the ends as best as I possibly can. So the zipper, it's going to get a lot of work, like pulled and tugged and open and closed. And I want to make sure that um, <laughs> that area is nice and secure. So I'm going to sew over it, back stitch a couple times too.
And just, I'm hyper focused on this lining and I'm just gonna kind of tug it out of the way. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to push my seam allowance back to a 4.5. Yep, I was on a 3 this whole time because I believe in tighter stitches around that around the zipper. It helps just so much. And I'm going to set flames to my <laughs> ends and call it a day on that. Um, where, 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 where did I put? I'm just going to... bottom sides and together. Line everything up. And then we are going to, I just, how do I have the other piece? <clears throat> so on page 12, we're going to go around using a one fourth of an inch seam allowance. We're going to go up, down, and across. Back stitch really well at the beginning and end. I was looking for an alcohol wipe because I see a little bit of gumming up. I usually keep alcohol wipes by um, my table no matter what. And then I have to deep clean my sewing machine afterwards because glue is glue. It's going gonna, it's gonna to gum up. Um, let's see. Melting the threads, the rogue threads. And before I forget... Again, the squirrel mentality for me is real. I'm going to wipe down the needle so that all the glue is not on it. Okay. So when you have this pocket now, it's super cool. When you open it up, you have card slots right in the pocket into your slip pocket. That is the coolest thing. I love that feature. Because, like, if you put your airport air tickets, anything, it's right in there and it's nice and secure. So we have that, and I'm going to cut this tells. I'm going to put that to the side real quick. And Oh, we're not putting it to the side. We're going to... Um, <clears throat> Take our two exterior pieces, put them right sides together. And see, there's marking holes that are already punched out. Right sides together. I try to, what I try to do is try to square off the boxes as best as I can. So that way that's, they're even when... They're nice and even when um, I go to sew.
All right, we're going to sew down. We're going to use, um, I'm going to say sew down. I didn't use any one fourth of an inch. I just want to double check if that's throughout the pattern or if it's like when she says. Always double check. I believe the seam allowance is one fourth of an inch. We're going to sew right sides together. of an inch. Back stitch really well at the beginning. And then When I'm usually doing like the bottom of a bag, I back stitch like four or five stitches back and forth because I just want to make sure that area is like well secure with Chappell text. I'm going to find our centers. I'm gonna... I have a lot of marking tools, you'll see that. And I also write my pattern pieces on the back of <laughs> stuff. So there's my writing always on some, some bag I sell. Okay. We have our Peltex and then we are going to snip away at the corners. All right. We're going to make this the center. This is just going to have to, you guys are going to have to work with me here. <laughs> Not a lot of room. Not a lot of room. We'll make it work. I'm going to grab some double-sided tape to be help me out here. I'm going to make take the double-sided tape and make sure it's not in the seam allowance, but just enough to hold down the pale tags. And then I'm going to again find my centers. Okay. It's supposed to be one fourth of an inch away from each side. And we're going to flip this and we're going to tack it down. All right. I'm just going to move this camera. I'm not using this one as much as the one I'm using. Because I, I, I think the angled one, this angle works really well. Because you can see like the whole, the whole work in progress. So we're going to make some marks. Um with the Tandy leather pen so that you can see we're going to um, 
sew one eighth of an inch on both sides, and then we're going to sew again um, at two and one eighth of an inch on the left and the right side. So. One, one eighth of an inch. I'm just going to draw these out on either side. And it's it's good to draw it out sometimes because then you can you know you're doing a straight line and and this tacks down the pel text. It tacks down the seam. And then two, let's see, two and one eighth of an inch. That's my puppy. <laughs> All right. So now we're going to stitch this down. I'm going to bring this over to my better machine. Machine, And that's about the only bad thing I feel about the 1541 is that there's not, it, there's not a huge throw. But I'm not going to complain. I'm grateful for what I have. I think this will be difficult on any machine, the, this part, because um, it's a lot of material that you're working with, and you just need to kind of roll it out of the way. And I'm just going to put a clip in this area that I'm rolling out of the way so it can stay. And what I'm also going to do is kind of roll this and clip it on the other side as well. So that way it could just, it, it, it'll help a little bit. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna sew all the way down, come down on this side and go do the 1 8 of an inch. So I'm trying not to break any thread. And I'm sewing in an area that's most likely, gonna, it's gonna be boxed off and you won't see it. One eighth of an inch. Just moving things, working with it, and then I'm going to go. I'm just going to back stitch to the other side like three or four stitches and then go down that side too one eighth of an inch And then we're going to do the last row of stitching, the two and one eighth of an inch away from the seam. Okay. My bag is already like, you know what, Shova, I don't like you. You rolled me, you folded me, you squished me. <laughs> Done with that part. Cut the 
sides on the front part. Okay. So we did that part and now we're going to sew up the side seams. I didn't catch that part that well, but it'll be fine. I can just put some uh, double side tape non in seams. This is the hyper stick, so it's going to be permanent. It happens. Sometimes you don't catch everything because you don't see it and you could be like one eighth of an inch off and it doesn't catch. There we go. All right, we're gonna sew up the side seams. We're gonna match everything. And we're gonna sew it up at one fourth of an inch. I like to clip at the top so nothing shifts. I'm sorry, we're going to be using a half an inch seam allowance on the sides. Okay. There we go. Half an inch. Back stitch well in the beginning and the end. other side. threads and let's trim up all these threads and then we're going to box our corners okay so I usually just open up the bag and kind of get it as flat as I can open up the seams and then I clip it. And just Get it all puff, like boxed out and even now, so that way when you sew it, it becomes nice and even. You should flatten it a little. Again, get squishy with it. I'm. I'm big on squishing your bag to get it to the right position. All right, we're going to take this over to our machine and we're going to sew a half an inch. And I'm going to back stitch in the beginning and the end, and like I always do, over the part that is the seam. Because I'm weird like that. <laughs> Okay. 
trimming their threads. And then we're going to get over on the other side and we're going to do the same thing. Half an inch. Back stitch. I like to sometimes stitch one off so that way you can just make sure I have those perfect corners. Getting the seam. All right. All right. So then we're going to We did our corners, we punched out the holes. We are going to I should have uh, turned this right sides. We're going to flip the assemble, we're going to start turning the, make, assembling. <laughs> Sorry, this is all... Uh, you normally do this with like um, a cotton canvas, but I really wanted cork and I really wanted it to be how, um, more structured than a normal bag so that way it can be a really awesome carry on bag for me. I'm pointing out the corners. So we're going to start assembling some hardware. This is going to be interesting when I have to set the rivets because the bag's going to get scrunched again. We're going to need two of our D-rings and we're going to need um, our bottom exterior straps. And for the record, our bottom exterior straps are the straps that are um, three inches long. So these. So there are holes that should match up with the holes that you have on the bottom. We're going to use D-rings and rivets. So I'm going to get, I'm using six medium rivets and I'm going to pull out four males and four females. All right, and then I'm also going to pull out my washers. My leather washers that were made. So that way, it when I install these leather pieces, it can handle the weight of... Um, the weight that I uh, of the material and the the rivets will pull through. I'm going to take a D ring and slide it on, and take both male pieces and poke it through the hole that I made. Thread the first one through. I'm trying to see if I can. I'm going to take the washer and put that through the threaded part first and then take a female cap and put it on. It is hard to see inside here so I will put these two in and then I will switch the bag down so you can see it. And I'm going to do the same here. I'm going to thread it through the hole. There. <laughs> My bag is going to be like Shinova. <laughs> Okay, so we're going to put this washer over it, and then a female cap and push it down and set it. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to set my rivets side by side because I don't want to like have rivets popping off when, um, 
I mean, I go to set the other side. So I'm going to have to kind of roll my material so that way I can get to these sides. Yeah, it's not fun. I usually like to do, um, I'm a big person that likes to do hand setting, but I don't know how to do that and show it to you without it being extremely loud. I like whacking it with the hammer, though. I'm not going to lie. <laughs> and I'm just trying to put... Okay, I might have to whack it with the hammer, and then I'll be right back. <laughs> okay, sorry about that. little hammer. So, I wanted to show you... That took about, like, ten minutes, too, so... Yeah, that would have been a long time. So, you put, when you put, th thread the Mel washer, I mean, Mel rivet in. I'm trying to see if I can show you a Mel rivet um, real quick. When you thread the Mel rivet in, when you, you're going to thread it through the fabric. And then when you're when you have the fabric, you'll put this washer that you made out of leather. There are instructions in the prep thing telling you how many washers you need. And then you will put your cap, your female cap. Then you can you can get this into your cam snap or whatever thing you have. You just have to roll it and be patient. It may take 10, 15 minutes, but it's worth the wait. Or you can hand set it. It's your discretion. Then when you pop it back out, when you, I'm going to show you to me. Get it all on wrinkly real quick for you. You see, there it is. So this, these, these connectors here on the bottom help make the backpack. So we have that part done. I'm really loving how this bag is coming together. So we have the mail section we did on page 13. Now we're going to go grab our lining piece. Now there's two lining pieces. There's one lining piece that has no holes in the prep, and then there is another one that does have holes. We're going to grab the one that does have holes. We're going to grab our accessory maker. We're going to grab four washers. And you make these leather washers from scraps, and I just keep them in lots and lots of bags. So that way, because I get a lot of bags from hardware, and it just helps double down to not have all my waste, um, like, recycling the bags. So then we're going to grab four females and four males rivets. There's a lot of rivets going on in here, and it's, it's super cool. It gives it a really, like, high-end feel. And it's just, it, you, you know your bag's going to last. So that that alone helps tremendously. And I like the way rivets look. <laughs> so here's the four females and then the four males. I'm going to put the females right here. Put the washers over here. And I'm going to stick the male rivets through. You can also then like embroider your name or um, hand stamp your name on this um, or hot foil. I did not do that and I wish I did, but you know, shoulda, coulda, woulda. I'm going to stick them through the holes that we created. There are measurements and you're going to see when I flip this over, there's measurements on how far down and how, what within. And they're about three, four inches of a uh, three fourths of an inch away from apart from each other. And I just draw a lot on my backs. I'm going to stick the, the washers, similar to what I did on the bottom of the bag. This, again, helps prevent, if there's tugging, the rivets just don't pop through. Um, there's going to be some kind of resistance. It's extra reinforcement. And just a good way to make bags. I usually, usually use a lot of washers when I'm using rivets, especially if the rivet's too big and not flush. I'm going to grab your... your uh, your your snap your uh press mine's again is from Mikos and margo and when i press down it like it's like one two it's like a one two push and i can feel like click in twice if i i feel like it didn't click in i test the rivet i'll like try to pluck it see if i can pull it out and go from there 
she look oh this is cool see now if, right here is when you will also put your earbud thing but again i did not do that um but Jada made a very valid point putting that earbud thing could be emergency medicine like an EpiPen or whatever um so we're gonna put this aside for now we're gonna go get our tall we need our our tall pocket and we have a short pocket all right so on our tall pocket and <laughs> again I write on everything we're going to put right sides together oh sorry we're going to right we're going to put right sides of the full tall pocket If you're using materials that fray, you need to close off the edge. If you don't, like I'm not, you can just put it like this because uh, it's not going to fray. We are going to top stitch a one eighth of an inch. And just make sure everything is lining up. Better safe than sorry, right? same thing for press top stitch your um, short edge your short pocket if you're using frame you need to do right sides together and to close it up but um, this material does not right this is the waterproof canvas from um, my handmade space and it's a little bit different it's like way more plasticky on the back but it there's like zero frame. I'm gonna top stitch this one eighth as well. trim those threads take these clips off all right so we're going to grab our other pocket that doesn't have the accessory clip and we are going to put the tall pocket three inches down from the top so when I have a big piece like this and I'm, I'm working on it what I like to do is I'll grab a ruler and do the measurement that they said like this is three inches down get a pencil or a chalk pen that's like opposite color of course I had to pick the most colorful thing and mark a three inch marker on each side from there then I will take the tall pocket and I will line it up with the first one, first side, that's at that white mark that I had made, and then do it on the other edge. All right. And I'm going to just stitch down this bottom for right now. A one eighth of an inch. Okay, trim 
down those threads. All right, then for the short pocket, we need it two inches below the top edge of the, of the tall wallet. The tall pocket, I keep saying wallet, I don't know why. So I'm gonna, again, white chalk, two. Two. And then I'm going to take my pocket and just fling some clips, because that's how I roll. And <laughs> place it where I made the white chalk mark mark. Chalk mark mark. Yep, I am not one for words today. <laughs> and put it on that. And see, it lines up easy, then you're going to be good. Um, then we're going to um, do stitches on the bottom part. We're going to do a first row stitching at one eighth, and then a second row stitching at one fourth. hop on over and do another row of stitching at one fourth and it's just one eighth off of the inch off of the last row of stitches. Um, three we're gonna make some marks again so we're gonna get our get our rulers and we are going to mark oh my god whatever my husband's cooking in the slow cooker is like making me extremely hungry <laughs> I'm like it smells so good so we're gonna make some marks at six inches and six inches and six and one fourth of an inch I'm just going to move these. You know, I need to have like a bracelet that has my Tandy leather pin on it. And just like it stays with me forever. <laughs> yeah. Or something that would be awesome. So, okay, six inches. And then six and one fourth of an inch. Okay. And then Let me grab it for the rollers. 13 inches in and 13 and one fourth. And then 13 and one fourth of an inch. All right, we're going to. We're going to start 
at the bottom of the short pocket and go up and across and down. Then we're going to do the same thing on the other side. And I just do a little stitch where over the thing, because you, you stick stuff in there well out of wear and tear. I usually stitch off once or twice. Let's pull it down. has so many pockets I'm gonna get so much stuff lost in it it's gonna be awesome I love big bags <laughs> with lots of pockets trim the threads we did this okay we're gonna put this aside now you could add rivets right through here on the smaller side and it looks really good on the bottom pockets and you know what because I said it I'm gonna do it I'm gonna do it it's my bag I want to my bag to look amazing <laughs> It, this is not like a lot of material to punch through. Making some washers out of cork so it doesn't pull through. And I'm going to put a rivet like just on that bottom pocket because it looks so chic. Do not punch into your stitches. You did all that work. I'm going to roll it down. You can draw a line or you can eyeball it. It's only like one fourth of an inch in between, so you can do it. Grab some little baby rivets because I think they're so cute. They are so little. <laughs> it's just going to keep wobble a wobbly. I'm not a fan of this um, punch. I cannot wait to get my other punch back. Um, Man, I, I guess I never pay attention how hard you have to press down on these because the other punch, it like use 70% less like punching strength, I guess. Flip this over. Take our weather washers. Set it and then bring the other one over. All right, that's so cute. <laughs> too cute all right so we're going to put this on the side for right now and we're going to work on our um zipper pocket now I, again i could not find zipper tape to m match my um my uh, fabric so 
going to so I'm going to be using um, number five tape and I'm going to be putting an end cap on this at the end I'm just gonna have a tell um, what I'm going to do right now is I'm going to take this to the, I folded these in half on itself and now I'm going to take it and just stitch on the side to lock it in. And I'm going to just take my threads and pull it to the other side and do it, the same thing. All right. Okay. I'm going to pull my needles out, put them away so I don't stab myself with them later because <laughs> it happens all too often. All right. All right. So we are going to, there's going to, I did both exteriors, so there's not going to be like a right side or a wrong side, but we are going to sew the zipper, um, the measurements, we're going to do um, one fourth of an inch away from the top. So what I'm going to do is just draw one fourth of an inch. And this is going to be my lining piece. And I'm going to want to kind of veer off of it. So I'm going to base this lining piece on at one eighth of an inch and veer, like veer off a, like my tail, like two inches away from, let's see, am I doing it two inches away? An inch in one fourth of a way. And so I'm just holding it. And then I'm just it's slightly veering off so it doesn't get caught. Trimming it. All right. I'm going to take one of the pieces I made that has um, one fourth of an inch uh, marks already on it so that way I don't have to. Um, I always like with the pivoting area is always a part for me that's super hard. So I like to draw my marks so that way I don't have to worry about it. Um, okay. So I'm going to go down. One fourth of an inch. And then I'm going to stop right above the one fourth of an inch going vertical. And then pivot. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to kind of just move my zipper completely out of the way. Oh, I ran out of bobbin. I mean, you know, that's better than um, having it running out of bobbin during top stitching, right? That's the worst. That's absolutely the worst. <laughs> okay. Okay, I'm going to put my bobbin in. We'll go back to that spot. 
All right. All right, so I'm gonna go back over and so back stitch and do the one fourth of an inch on the side. All right, we're gonna cut these threads and then I'm gonna just trim at an angle on the corner, get the other threads and I'm gonna trim at an angle and then the area that has the zipper teeth area, I'm just gonna trim back one eighth of an inch so that way it it will like poke out nicer and a little bit cleaner and I'm just trimming I'm kind of grading the seam so that way that they don't lay right on top of each other and um, it'll be easier to top stitch and give a cleaner fish finish all right So we're going to turn this I'm just going to remove this this zipper because I don't know why I kept it on. And just roll out your corners and your seams. Gently pull out your zipper. And then we're going to top stitch it. I'm just going to use a um, soft tool though to get out the corners a little bit better. Don't try to poke through. Kind of like, I feel like I need the, the fabric through. All right, we're going to top stitch this at one eighth of an inch around. Dogs are going off. <laughs> I'll be right back. <laughs> no packages, just the wind, and Roxy started to bark. So I apologize, apologize again. So after we top stitch this, we find our centers. We're going to grab um, one of your pieces, and you're going to either have your zipper going to the left or to the right. I want this to be on the back side so I can grab my keys or I mean in the front so it could be with my keys and I'm going to machine base this at um, one eighth of an inch All right, and I'm gonna just put this on the side. I'm gonna grab my um, two of my connectors and my top um, of the lining piece. Sorry, so many things to collect. So many pieces of extraness is connecting. <laughs> All right, so on the top piece, you're gonna measure in the measurements that are on page. I believe it's page 17 and it's section 13A. And you're going to machine base these in, have it flush. I'm going to put it in right there. And this is thick because I'm using cork. And I have one little piece of Decaville right in the top. So if you're doing 
cotton would be really good. And you're still going to need probably possibly a hump jumper, but everything's going to be secure. So we have that. We're going to find our center. We're going to place this right sides down and you can put a clip. And then we're gonna sew this on at a half an inch and make sure um, that you don't sew your zipper tail back stitch well from the beginning and end. And when I get over to the areas that have the, the connectors, I do like a little back stitch. Use a hump jumper if needed. Or like somebody like really gave really good advice they use a sewing needle box and I'm like that is so smart all right so this is where I'm going to veer off a little from the pattern um and you could use your discretion at this point you would um flip this up and then you would machine you would uh top stitch this on across the top I really like top stitching from the underlining because then the recessed zipper holds up. Like it stands on its own and doesn't sink down. But that's a personal preference. In the in pattern instructions, you would put your seams and you uh, you would put your seams going down and you would top stitch. So I'm going to do it this way because I, I just I like how the, when the recessed zipper sits nice and taut in the bag. It looks really cool to me. Um, and because this is in my bag, I'm doing it my way. And also, I like it because, like, right here, this is where I could fill a connector. It's another row of stitching right there. Just that extra protectiveness. Right, and then when we trim these threads, what you can do to help with when you're sewing up the sides with bulk because you can kind of cut the sides at an angle and it just helps relieve some of the bulk in that area. All right, well, we got that part all done. So what we're gonna do next is we are going to put them together, right sides together, but we need to leave an opening. We need to leave an eight inch opening. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to just draw, all my clips are on the floor. I was like, where are all my clips? Yeah, on the floor show. So I'm gonna draw just like two and a half inches in on both sides. The most important part when I'm doing a lining is I like to match each fold to its fold. So it doesn't look um, a little off. And so this is, a, okay, you're going to be like, show me, use double-sided tape on everything. And you're right, I do. This is when I do use double-sided tape on this, and I'll show you why. Because themes do shift, so what I like to do I know the seam allowance is a half inch, so I'm using one fourth of an inch tape. It won't gum up my needles. I'm going to match lining to lining, so that way I know when I go to clip it, it will it'll have like perfect like all the way around. I can fix everything else that doesn't match up, but that 
is sometimes to me noticeable in a bag. So I'm going to show you again. I'm going to grab a little piece of double sided tape and I'm going to lay it right on one side. And then I'm taking not, I'm trying to match the fold lines on the interior pieces so that they are perfectly matched. And then I just press down and it won't shift. So if anything else shifts during this time, it'll be okay because it all will match. All right, so a half an inch, make sure your zipper tails are out of the way. Back stitch really well. And if you want, which I'm gonna do, I'm gonna do this top part until the, um, the tan cork is on at a half an inch, and then I'm gonna bear it to um, 5 eighths of an inch. So that way be, the pockets could be a little bit, the inside lining could be a little bit snugger. Then I'm going to back stitch really well there, and then I'm going to just bring my base to it. And back stitch. I'm going to pull up my threads again and go down to the base of this. And yes, I'm doing this a little bit under a little bit less more than a half inch because I like to have my linings really snug. Start burying to a half an inch. All right. And then I'm going to cut the strings from the opening. And what we're going to do is we're going to, um, Box out these corners, and I just kind of flatten the bag as much as I can, and then I open up the seams so they're butterflied. And we're going to do the same thing on this side. Open it up. Now you could make a zipper pocket that go inside of it and you birth it that way. Um, but I kind of like the way this works. Sometimes I love birthing through a pocket and then, I mean, birthing through a lining and then close with the pocket. And other times I kind of like this because that, that having that um, sewn texture on the bottom gives a little bit of characteristic to the bag that I like. All right, so, and it's, it just, the structure just looks really cool. So I'm going to now stitch this down in place, if I can grab my tails. And like I said, I like to start forward and I kind of back stitch off one stitch. I stitch over the seam. I'm just going to trim down this to about one fourth of an inch. Let's do this other side. Flatten it down. Four, four, four. One stitch off. Four. Keeping those butterflies seams open. Okay, we're going to trim that. 
All right. So we are going to place our exterior bag within the interior. So make sure you're cognizant of where the zipper is, where's your front of the bag, all that. And uh, I'm gonna stick them inside each other real quick. All right, so we're gonna start matching and I'm gonna kinda clip my tail, my zipper, zipper tails away because they wanna poke through because that's what zipper tails do. And I'm going to take the seams and open them up and I'm gonna clip on both sides of the butterfly seams so there'll be no movement on there. Okay. And we're just going to clip. The only bad thing about having your recess zipper go up, it wants to pop up when you're sewing, um, when you're stitching this down. So you're just going to have to push it down and be cognizant of it when you're sewing so that you know, hey, I got the seam here that's wanting to act a donkey. <laughs> Okay, I'm just trying to maneuver the bag so I can clip it all, but it if you followed all the seam allowances, it's going to fit nicely. There will be no trying to ease in the gusset. It's just going to fit. All right, and then we are going to... We're going to sew them together using a half an inch. I think I got it all. So I'm going to stick this underneath the machine and we're going to start uh, making sure raw, raw edges are with raw edges. I should have used the other clips. These, the flatter paint hair clips are really good for like flat pieces, not so much for um, holding together a top, but we'll see. We'll see. Raw edges to raw edges. And just if you have a free arm um, on your domestic, this is when. <laughs> They are extremely useful. They're always useful, but like, you're like, oh yeah, I got it. This is awesome. Okay, going over the first seam and just gonna back stitch. And I'm just gonna try to tuck down that zipper pocket that wants to poke up because I wanted to do things my way. <laughs> Make sure your hardware is down so you don't accidentally sew over it. It happens all the time to so like every single person. <laughs> it's normal. That's why we just have to keep reminding ourselves.
Okay, so let's see. Okay. We're almost done. We're just just making sure those last raw edges all stay together. Okay. We're gonna trim the threads. And what I like to do, we're going to trim down, um, go slowly, they can be tricky, turn the bags right side out. So what I'm going to do is I like to trim down the areas that have the seams, like I'll just do like a little triangular cut, so that way the, um, when I'm top stitching there won't be a ton of bulk. All right, and it just goes flying. So I'm gonna pull, <laughs> pull our exterior out of the lining. Take your time. You don't want anything to tear. I mean, it's very easily stitches can come apart. Move these out of the way. All right. Out the lining box, your corners, just poke them out. And just make sure all your corners on the exterior are boxed. And then what we're going to do is we're going to close up this lining. So we're going to, I like to put my fingers like kind of in the mouth, like and be a little taut. And and just clip along it. And I'm not gonna lie, the busier the print, like my print is, the more you don't see the stitching. <laughs> you're so busy, like there's blue, red, green, yellow, <laughs> and you're so much. I like my bags for myself to be like a simple color on the outside and like fun and crazy prints on the inside. We're gonna just stitch this down at one eighth of an inch. Back stitch. Okay, so I just kind of, there's usually a lot of air in the bag, so what I'm doing is I'm going to open, like, take it, open it up, it's going to release some of the air, and then I'm going to stuff it in there. And I'm just putting the box corners towards the end of the bag, and then I'm going to take the bag and massage this part down. This is supposed to be inside the bag. 
Okay, um, I'll be right back. Kids calling from school. I am telling you, patience is my virtue today. Um, my son now is at home not feeling very well, so there's that. <laughs> Sorry about that. So let's, I'm going to conclude this so we can get this done. Um, we have our bag. One of my cameras is out, so we only have one additional view. We still will rise, though. Here we go. So when we have our bag all the way out, you can either turn your bag inside out and sew from the the interior, you uh, the exterior, or you can like kind of plain pancake it. I trust my bobbin on this machine. It the tension is amazing. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to kind of swish it in place so you can see what, as I'm stitching. Um, I'm going to stitch at one eighth of an inch all the way around, moving the ruler out so you guys don't get more things flying at you. And I like to stop and start, you know, usually in a seam of some sort so that way um, if there's back stitches, nobody will really notice. So <laughs> don't do what I did and just jump right into it. You're going to... Um, you roll down your seam. You're going to keep all the hardware and everything out of the way. This does take a, quite a bit of hardware, but like all the functions it has is worth it. Like this can be the perfect amusement park bag. Like if you're tired and your shoulders are hurting from a backpack, you can turn it into a shoulder strap. If the shoulder straps are hurting, then you can turn it into an adjustable strap. The possibilities are, like, endless. And then just keep moving it, squishing it. It has a lot of air in it because it does. Sometimes it just has to deflate a little bit. I'm just making sure that everything's aligned. Squishy, squishy. gonna trim these threads all right oh and jaded I did this just for you so we're I added the earbud thing because I I agree it could be used for other purposes we're going to you're gonna mark I did mines with one hole because I accidentally punched one hole without doing the second hole and I wasn't going to waste a piece of leather. So I'm doing it one hole and it's going to be on the opposite side of each seam, one inch down. Or you can do um, the two holes and have it on either, um, on both sides of the seam so that you're not sewing, you're not punching a hole through the seam because then it can get all messy. So I'm going to slide one D-ring in on that and a D-ring on the that's not the right one. <laughs> Where's the other piece? I just had it too. I hate when that happens when you have everything and then something gets knocked down because you're moving around too much. Where did I put it? Okay, I will find it, but I'm going to work on the one I have right now. And I'm going to first. I'm going to uh, melt these little ends of threads, so that, and then I'm going to grab a rivet, one male, one female. I'm going to thread the male in 
thread it through this hole and then my hole puncher never like quite punches a hole all the way through. And I'm going to I need a longer rivet. I'm going to grab the longer rivet right now. I have extra long rivets because this is going through a lot of material and a lot of leather. Okay, thread it. My son, it, he's sick, but he doesn't apparently realize I'm filming. Okay. <laughs> um, and I'm going to push this down. And, oh. <laughs> Change my dies out. This is the great thing about having some kind of press, whether it's a cam snap or um, gold star Mikus and Margo. There's so many different. Um, the one I wanted before Mikus and Margo is C.S. Osborne, I think. They use it on a lot of car and boating places, and it has, like, some really cool die features. Um, we're going to press the die. And that's one end. And I'm going to do the same thing on with the other one. Thread. And put the cap on. And we're going to press this down too. What I'm going to do is I'm going to take some pictures of this in the different ways you can wear it so you can see um, you have like a, a better understanding of like how this bag is so big it's hard to get it all on to even the table. So I will definitely, definitely, definitely put that in there and I'm going to now, um, we're going to now make the snap. So if, if you are, I'm going to do a few things. If you're going to have the snap in the front, we're going to do a couple things. First, I'm going to take one of my leather um, name tags that I got for Christmas from Stitch Coat, and I'm going to put this on my bag. I'm going to put it on the pocket because I just like the way it looks. And let me find the center. You could put it where there's directions to put it on the top, but okay, just making sure I have the center on this, and I'm going to just clip it there in the center real quick. And you know, keep, I should have just kept the clip there. That makes no sense. Punch a hole. I should have did this earlier. I was just contemplating if I was going to put it on the top or not, to be honest with you. But then I was like, why not? Why not? I'm going to get the smaller rivets. It's not a lot of material there.
Okay. All right. Super cute. All right, and I'm going to just press these rivets really quickly in onto it. So. Sorry, you gotta have to like push it down and get it into a weird position for it to set. Not what I'm doing. Okay. All right, so I have my front. I have my sides on. Now we're going to start working on. Um, I'm hoping everything. My son's home, and now there's like all this noise. I apologize. Um, we're going to make, um, there's two options. You can have your, just your spring hole tap in the front and it can open and close like this, or just it snaps in place, or you can have a tab that goes over. And by having the tab, you get to put a D ring on the back or an O ring, whatever you have to keep it secure. If that's what you are gearing for, we're going to, Gonna, we're going to install the center snap, spring snap. The mill is going to be in the front. So if you go back to uh, page 20, it gives you how far where the center is. Um, but what I'm going to do is I'm just going to bring seam to seam. And put a clip there and just mark my center in the front. All right. So I marked it right here. And we're going to put the male part of the snap in on there. It's going to be a half a, it needs to be a half an inch below the top. So I'm going to punch a hole where I made my little T. Make sure I'm not punching through anything except that. All right. Then I'm going to, I know this is such a big bag. Um, <laughs> then I'm going to get the male portion of my 24 line snap. You can use the 12.5, the it works really well. Um, I'm using the 24 line because um, that's the dies I can find right now. I do have the 12.1, but I do not, for the love of goodness, cannot find this top part for it. It is, it's, it's kind of mad me. So we're the, the putting the top part in. And I'm going to take this mel portion and thread it from the back. See, and it comes up. Then I'm going to stick it on to this little bit of this little post and make sure it I'm trying to get this where you see it and not knock everything off. Um, make sure you really get this hole into that little post and push it down. And now we have our mill portion. So now I'm going to remove the male portion because the next part we're going to be working on is the female portions. All right, because we're going to be doing this a lot. We're going to be taking this off and putting the rivet one following suit. All right, so we have our piece and we're to make 
the, the, the cap sockets we're going to um, punch holes, two holes on one end, three eighths of an inch and at one eighth. I mean one inch, three eighths of an inch and one inch. So I'm going to do three eighths of an inch. So you can see. Yeah. And one inch. And then let's see when I, I'm going to punch the holes. And I'm going to now get the female part. And that's the two cap heads. I'm hoping these fit really well. If not, I will make something work. <laughs> something will be a decorative mark. I'm going to stick the female portion on here. And then I'm going to do it again. Put the another cap on there and then put the female portion right on it. All right, we have two caps. Everything's secured nicely. We're going to now remove this portion. And I try to keep all the dies together because, oh, sometimes I'm just a total klutz and I lose everything and <laughs> I like, I, found, I had my like smaller ones, the smaller spring snaps, but then I can't find, I can't find the top part anymore. And it's like, I got to clean out my workroom and it'll get better. So now we're going to put the, um, the regular, um, press for the rivet back on. And then we are going to be making some marks. Um, we're going to punch holes, punch a hole on one end, um, on the opposite, we're going to do three fourths of an inch on an end from the opposite. We're going to do one end, one inch and three fourths of an inch. And I'm just finding my center when I'm lining up everything. And I am going to punch a hole. And I'm going to now take my, my back piece. I'm going to definitely make sure I find the centers of that too as well. And just draw a line. And I want to make sure everything lines up good. It does. And I'm going to draw the two holes that I made on the back. I'm going to tuck down my um, zipper panel so I don't accidentally punch through it. And I'm going to do a hole and do a hole. And then what I'm going to do is grab some rivets and I'm going to thread the first. See how I didn't punch through? I, this one, this, oh, I can't, I miss my other one so much. I, I cannot wait. So I can get it replaced because whew, I've been using a lot of drill bits when I'm not on camera because it works better that way. And then 
All right, and what I'm gonna do is I'm actually gonna go for a little longer of a post and, and put maybe a washer. Just to uh, give it that extra security. And I'm grabbing washers right now. All right. So thread this through, add a washer. and punch it. And then I'm gonna put my D ring in between and do it again. Okay, then I'm gonna thread this D ring. And put the female cap on it. Fold everything down. All right. So I'm going to put this to the side, and you'll see. I'm just knocking everything down too. This is a big bag. I'm sorry. So you're going to be able to um, close it up like this if you don't want to zip it. But if you want to zip it, let me show you what it's going to look like with the zipper on it. We are going to put the two ends together. Uh, <laughs> So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to try to look for a better word than setting your zipper on fire, burning it. You know, the standard ones that we're using right now. <laughs> um, we're going to feed this in. So when it's closed, because, let me see how I can do this. When it's closed, because I, 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 I'm trying to get this, because I sewed from the lining, like it's basically called a um, understitching, this stays flush and up and doesn't bow in like it normally does. But it's still fine if you want to just like double protect yourself and put that snap. I like the I like anything with the snap feature because sometimes your bag is just too bulky and you just like I want to snap this bad boy and go. So this bag has like so many features. We have our slip pocket in the front. We have where we can do it like a, a crossbody. We have a D ring in the back so we can do it as a backpack. We have shoulder straps things we can do in here, and I am just going to put this zipper in, in real quick you'll see I, I don't do anything really fancy with the zipper ends I um, use double-sided tape I'm telling you I think double-sided tape is my best friend if I got like a box of it for Christmas I probably would cry and be like yes everything's getting double-sided tape <laughs> so I'm gonna take this and this on here and we already burnt our ends from earlier <laughs> so I'm just going to put it like this and then I'm gonna grab my zipper ends and you can use uh, you can make one you can um, there's so many things you can do 
there's the designers have made like so many cool ways to have your zipper ends um and you could do like the original and you have the metal tack like a separating zipper and it could just open and close like with a jacket zipper too that's that would be cool too the zipper this uh this little screw was like i am not coming out shova so i'm gonna put this in I know some people put like a dot of freight check in there. Okay, so if you make this to sell, I would not recommend it. Because if that you have to do a repair or something and you're trying to remove this, you're going to strip the screw and you're going to have to wind up cutting the zipper and you're losing length. So the screw really does work wonders. It gets all the way in there and it's not going to go anywhere. So we have that part done. And what I'm going to show you is something that's not on the pattern but something I wanted. So I love the fact that sh her straps can convert into different sizes. And I think that is amazing. But I love having a um, an adjustable strap that's nice and wide. So this is what I'm going to do. This is a one and a half inch webbing and I have a half a one and a half inch adjustable strap. And this is one inch rings okay and with that I have one rectangle ring so the first piece I'm going to pick I'm um, going to get is going to be roughly I'm tall I'm 5'9 so I'm going to go 14 um, for someone that's shorter I would probably do anywhere from 10 to 12 I'm going to take a little bit of glue and I'm going to put it at the on here on this top part because you really can't sit on fire because I'm using cotton if you're using polyester like a seatbelt webbing go for it fire it away man I'm going to take an end I made and Take my, I always have like a baby wipe or a wet napkin around me because me and glue, oof. So I'm going to put it here so it's going to stop the fray edges and give it a second. And then I'm going to take one of these and I'm going to lay glue on one side I'm telling you I should have a stock and beacon too and magnetic glue I put glue on everything except my zipper <laughs> I'm going to adjust this down and I'm going to sandwich this in all right so that's one side so I'm going to let that sit and for my adjustable strap I want to use it that's 14 inches so I'm going to do I'm kind of fluffy too so I'm going to do about 40 inches all right so on this side, I'm going to glue this is just like a one by um, one and a half inch piece of cork that I had left over. And then I'm just going to fold it over. And hopefully this extra feature you guys will like because I love these and I wanted to use both and not one and this is how I get that done I sound like dr. Seuss oh my god <laughs> okay so I'm going to grab this I'm going to bring this over to the machine and I'm going to top stitch this at 1 8 of an inch on the top and I'm going to go back and forth this is cotton and cork so we got we could do this okay I'm going to snip these threads. And 
and then I'm just going to go in because this is still um, a, like a nylon web um, nylon thread so I'm just going to singe those little ends in, and then I'm going to go and I'm going to stitch across and top and I'm only going to I'm going to stop um, right above the hardware so I'm going to start at the bottom, I mean on the side, and I am going to backstitch. This is this is going to carry my bag, and if I know me, it's going to be it's going to be jam packed. <laughs> I'm I'm just like a little rough when it comes down to my bags. And move these threads so that they don't get caught up on the feed dog. back stitch again and then I'm just gonna trim these threads all right so I'm going to do with this oops, with this long one I'm going to do the same thing I'm going to stitch it at one fourth of inch or um, one eighth of inch your your discretion and then I'm going to trim the threads. And I'm going to melt any um, little threads that are from the... Okay, so I'm going to take my tri glider that's one and a half inches and I'm going to put it over and under. I'm going to take this to the machine and I'm leaving a little bit of room and I'm going to draw, do a little square box. And again, this is cotton so you can go ham. Just make sure you're hardware is out of the way and I'm going to go do a little bit of a mix Okay, and I'm going to melt, set this on fire, I mean, <laughs> there's like, I, every time I say it, I'm like, it the, it never sounds right. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to set my ends on fire real quick, just bear with me. <laughs> so we're going to take this, I think, hold on, yeah, we're going to take this, oh, I'm sorry, I forgot to do this, we're going to take this part, and um, Fold it over and we're going to do the same thing. We're going to do a little box. We're taking the smaller one with the, we attach this. We're going to do, we're going to make a little box as well. It doesn't have to be huge. All right, we're almost done. I promise. It's well worth it. I love, I love this kind of style of um, adjustable strap. You can expose your hardware and your leather, or your cork or your vinyl, whatever your heart content. All right, so we're going to take this big one, lay it where this part, where we just have that tab in front. Make sure. It doesn't 
like like go the other like swivel we're going to thread it through the tr the rectangle and then thread it through the tri glider we don't want to twist it so all right and i'm going to trim the extra cottiness of this and then i'm going to slide my tri not my tri my swivel hook so it's in the middle and then i'm going to put a lot of glue all over here <laughs> I mean, you could put double-sided tape, but I don't know. I, I use beacon glue when it comes down to adjustable straps. And it helps with the frame, maybe, too, tremendously, because it locks the threads in. And then we just put it down. And we fold it over. And it like beacon glue automatically wants to like start sticking immediately. So we're going to now sew this on. And I don't have a big enough needle for this leather, but it's gonna it's gonna make I'm gonna make it work. <laughs> I should have change needles I usually do because I'm using a 116 needle but this proves that you put, this leather is a little bit more domestic friendly than it needs to you just need a hop jumper and you, you had a bigger like a le you this is when you use those leather needles okay and what I'm going to do on both the, the swivel hooks real quick is I'm going to put a second row of stitches just around this top part. Just like one fourth of an inch away. And back stitch. Okay, and I'm going to do the same thing over here. Just, it, it just, it's cotton. So you know what cotton um, reinforcement stitches are a key to keeping everything together. So, and I'm, I'm bringing this to so magical. So it's fairly certain that this is going to be, my bag is going to be heavy. All right. And then again, I'm going to singe. I don't like the word singe either. <laughs> I think of like hair. Ugh, that's the worst. Curling iron singes. All right, let me get all these loose threads. And as you can see, you could put rivets in it, but um, because this kind of this kind of cotton frays fast, I I wouldn't add extra holes if it's not needed. So um, cut off this little piece right there. So we have really cool leather straps that are connected, and you can have both of them showing. And it just I don't know, it looks really lush. I love the way it looks. You can add another row of stitching if you want. Um, you could put like, if you want it, put a strip of cork on the front and the back and then add a rivet. If that, that will make you feel better, do it. Like go for it. That, that would be an awesome uh, feature. You could put it on the end here and, um, you could put it around this part right here. So that way it can just be extra secure, but, um, uh, it's all going to be cohesive and I'm going to take pictures of the bag itself. I'm gonna take pictures of the bag itself because this bag is, it's huge. It's huge. Um, 
you, so you, ugh, I can't talk. With the Gabby, you're going to, um, you could put your straps either as a, on a, as a shoulder bag. You could put it as a backpack. There is so many ways you can wear this bag. Um, it's, this is one of my favorite bags. I've been wanting to make one for myself. I've been traveling a little bit more lately and I felt like if, even if I went on a small retreat when it was just like a weekend thing, I, this can be the bag and you're just, it's just super cute and very, very, very roomy has so many pockets and there's so many different techniques that you learned during this, um, making this bag. So I am going to take some pictures of it. I'll insert it at the end of this. I'm going to give you, um, in the description box, you're going to get, uh, where you could purchase the Gabby pattern. And if you use a code word that's in the description box, it's only good for the month of February, 2023. Let me repeat that again, February, 2023. So only this month, um, this is what I'm recording, then you can get 20% off the pattern. So, or any of the patterns she has. And if there's another pattern you see in there, you're like, hey, Shinova, you haven't made this bag. Can you make it? I definitely will. I love Georgia's Girl Stitch. Her patterns are amazing. Um, I'll insert pictures in, and I appreciate you guys watching. If you have a question in reference to anything I made today, um, please, please, please leave a comment down below. I'm more than willing to answer. Uh, any questions, one way you can help this channel grow is by liking, subscribing, and sharing if you think this is worthy. Um, I will also put information on inside the description box if you're wanting to get more insight about like modification or like just like the daily life of me. I do have a Patreon. Or if you want to say, hey, thank you, I've been trying to make this bag and I didn't know how. Um, here's, I want to send you something. I do have a Kofi. I'll put it in the description box and it also will be tagged down below as a first comment. So until the next time I see you, I hope you have a fantastic day. You stay safe and happy sewing. Bye.